Hello there, my name is Nate, and welcome to another exciting video on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. This time, it's all about Filipino food. Fortunately, we are here in the province of Pampanga, which is known as the culinary capital of the Philippines. Now, I have to tell you that after living here for over two years, I'd say that Filipino cuisine is by far one of the most underrated collections of delectable dishes in Southeast Asia. Much of what I'm going to be showing you today was completely unknown to me before arriving in the country for the first time. I've selected each of these eateries based on personal preferences and previous visits. I know I'm going to miss a lot of popular dishes and restaurants, as there's just so much to cover in one video. So, I'd love for some of you, both locals and travelers, to share your top picks and specific recommendations for all things food across the Philippine Islands in the comments below. I know I would certainly appreciate it, and I'm sure quite a few other viewers would as well. All right, I have already worked up an appetite, so let's get started on this mouth-watering adventure. Come on. Located about an hour north of Metro Manila, Angola City is Pampanga's most populated urban area with nearly half a million residents. It's here you'll find some of the absolute best traditional dishes in the Philippines, some dating back centuries. While some Filipino favorites are native to these islands, it's evident that the country's cuisine has been heavily influenced over time by its vast colonial past, as well as settlers from other parts of the Far East. Today, I'll be presenting a mix of local and national, from beloved family-owned restaurants to widely recognized corporate giants. We'll begin our culinary tour here in Clark, a former U.S. airbase that's now a rapidly developing freeport zone just to the north of Angola City. For further information about Clark's intriguing history and modern-day growth, be sure to check out the links to several other videos of mine in the description below. Located right next to the present-day Clark Air Base, which is operated by the Philippine Air Force, is a longtime favorite in the area, Clark Lomi House and Restaurant. Opened in 1995, this simple establishment has been proudly serving Filipino dishes for more than 25 years. On top of the many selections available at the cafeteria-style serving area, there's a menu with plenty more freshly prepared options coming straight from the kitchen. Of course, I've got to order what's in the name. Lomi. This common dish from Batangas, located south of Manila, features fresh egg noodles mixed in with a starchy gravy and can be served with chicken, pork, or vegetables. Think of it as a thick noodle soup. Varieties of lomi include quail eggs, fish balls, and pork liver. Soy sauce, crushed red chili peppers, and calamansi juice are often added to enhance the flavor. We have to focus on calamansi for a moment just because it's so widely used here in the Philippines. Calamansi is a hybrid citrus shrub native to the Philippines, as well as parts of Indonesia and China. It's also referred to as Philippine lemon or Philippine lime, and you can see why. The fruit of the calamansi closely resembles a lime, and the taste is quite similar too. It's naturally quite sour, which makes it great for refreshing lemonade-like drinks but it is also used for marination, marmalades, and condiments, which is what we have here. I find it to be a wonderful flavoring agent that adds a whole new vibrant layer to the Filipino culinary experience. My second dish is also in the soup category, arroz caldo. It means rice broth or rice stew, and it's a well-known type of Philippine lugao or rice porridge. On the wider spectrum in Asia, this would be referred to as konji, which has origins in China dating back 3,000 years. It is believed that Chinese traders introduced konji to native Filipinos hundreds of years ago, and then it was later adapted to appeal to Spanish preferences when the Philippines was part of the Spanish Empire. This dish is fairly simple. Hot rice porridge with a hard-boiled egg, ginger, garlic, black pepper, and boiled pieces of chicken. 
Once again, calamansi juice is usually added for flavor, as well as fish sauce. A rose caldo is delicious and delightful. In fact, it's considered by many Filipinos to be a comfort food, great for cooler, stormy days and even breakfast. The calamansi juice really makes a difference, especially with something like this where it's fairly bland, unless you add fish sauce or the calamansi juice. Those flavoring agents make a massive difference. Just fantastic. Finally, I'm indulging in a type of spring roll called lumpia, which is most commonly found here in the Philippines and Indonesia. There are multitudes of varieties with Chinese origins. A generalized description would be a pastry wrap with various vegetarian or non-vegetarian fillings. The lumpia I've been served here is called Shanghai lumpia. It's deep fried and filled with pork and vegetables. I only ordered a few of these, but they ended up giving me 40. And as you can tell, I've already gone through about half. It's just so delicious. I mean, with the sweet and sour sauce, the fillings on the inside, it's lumpia-licious. Magnificent. For those with a sweet tooth, another lumpia version can be caramelized with bananas, jackfruit, ube, or sweet potatoes. Next, we have a quaint Angola City gem tucked away on a small street, just minutes from downtown. Opened in 1986, Mila's Tokwat Baboy is a famous family-owned restaurant started by Milagros and Ruben Gomez. A wall by the kitchen is covered with pictures of celebrities that have visited over the years. One menu item that has earned this eatery so much attention is Sisig. Not only is it in my list of favorites, but it's also considered to be one of Pampanga's most famous and beloved dishes. Sisig means to snack on something sour, and while there are multiple variations in the Philippines and abroad, the core ingredients are typically pig's face, pig's belly, chicken liver, onions, and chili peppers, with calamansi juice and vinegar added as seasoning. Uh, so the dice mixture is served sizzling on a hot plate with rice on the side. While Sisig can be traced back to the 1700s in historical writings, longtime Angola City resident Lucia Cunanan is credited with reinventing Sisig decades ago at her Aling Lusing restaurant, which is just minutes away. Her Sisig became so well known because she added cooked pieces of pig's ears and cheeks, and preparation of the meat involved several key steps, boiling, broiling, and grilling. The immense popularity of Cunanan's dish helped establish Angola City as the Sisig capital of the Philippines. The Sisig served here at Mila's has its own special character that so many have come to love. It is prepared with meat from boiled pig's head that's fried until golden, and secret ingredients are added as seasoning to make this one truly tasty hot plate of pure yum. For my second dish, Allow me to introduce you to yet another one of my favorites, beef caldereta. Traditional caldereta is a goat meat stew mixed with tomatoes, potatoes, carrots, bell peppers, hot peppers, and garlic. As with many other dishes, there are a variety of options when it comes to the protein. Beef, chicken, pork, and duck caldereta are some of the most common. For me, the flavorful tomato-based sauce truly makes this dish remarkable especially when served over a plate of rice. Caldereta actually has roots that can be traced to the Iberian Peninsula in Europe. When the Philippines was part of the Spanish Empire, Spaniards brought similar stew dishes to the islands that were later adopted and adjusted to fit local preferences. In short, Caldereta is bliss for the taste buds, and Mila's Tokwat Baboy has by far some of the best in town. We now 
head across the city to another Kapapangan restaurant with an expansive menu of Filipino food, Ikabud. There are four locations scattered around Papanga, but this has to be my favorite. It's got a distinctive, authentic atmosphere with plenty of local pride and flair. For outdoor dining, there are even some traditional Kubo huts, which can be found all over the Philippines, especially in the countryside. I'd love to dine in this Kubo hut, but because of the weather and fading light, I think we'll have to move indoors. There, that's much better. First up is Bulalo, a Filipino beef soup from southern Luzon, specifically Batangas and Cavite. This massive bowl on its own is a hearty meal. Beef shanks are boiled in a light-colored brothy soup and mixed in with onions, scallions, corn on the cob, leafy vegetables, garlic, ginger, and fish sauce. Take my word for it, this is indeed a phenomenal soup that beautifully brings together various colors, textures, and flavors. Moving on, I've got to show you my personal favorite, a true culinary delight that could be called the unofficial national dish of the Philippines, adobo. It's native to these islands and can be traced all the way back to the 1600s, though it could be earlier. Aside from the name of the dish, adobo refers to the cooking technique that can be applied to chicken, which is what I've ordered here, as well as beef, pork, quail, duck, goat, catfish, shrimp, squid, and cuttlefish. The meat, seafood, or even vegetables are simply marinated in a mixture of salt, vinegar, soy sauce, bay leaves, garlic, black peppercorn, and cooking oil. It can be served saucy or dry with, yet again, a side order of rice. I've noticed I'm absolutely in love with sauces like this, and the right combination of all the ingredients makes a world of difference. What's even better is the fact that adobo can be stored outside of a refrigerator for later consumption. And that's because the salt and vinegar prevent the growth of bacteria, thus preserving the entire dish for extended periods of time. For centuries, cooking techniques like this were vital for Filipinos living in a warm tropical climate year-round. Please, if you haven't been to the Philippines before, when you do come, make sure this is the very first dish you try. You can thank me later. Okay, we're sticking with chicken, but switching to a much larger chain restaurant. Welcome to Mang Inasal, home of the tasty Filipino quick service barbecue chicken. Mang Inasal, which means Mr. Barbecue, was started by Edgar Sia at a mall in Iloilo City on Panay Island in 2003. Following more than a decade of immense success, Mang Inasal was completely bought out by the Jollibee Corporation in 2016. We'll come back to Jollibee a little bit later. There are now more than 450 Mong Inasal locations across the Philippine Islands. The main dish, Inasal, is chicken marinated in a mixture of calamansi juice, pepper, coconut vinegar, and anato. The chicken is then grilled over hot coals while basted with the marinade. Finally, it's served with rice and condiments including calamansi, soy sauce, chicken oil, and vinegar. I'm telling you, when eating in a salt, this is the way to go. Bare hands, going in for the chicken and rice, makes it quite a feast. One menu option that makes mong in a salt so popular is the unlimited rice, in which servers walk around the dining area and provide rice, rice, and more rice to the heart's content of customers. As a chicken and carb lover, 
This is my kind of place. This has to be some of the best barbecue chicken I've ever had. This chicken is so good. Perfectly grilled, very flavorful. And the sauce, as I mentioned, it's calamansi juice, which we talked about earlier, chicken oil, and soy sauce. So you mix it all together, and then you spread it over the rice, and it just enhances the entire dish. So good. For the sweet finale, it's halo halo, which means mixed together. It's considered by many Filipinos to be the nation's number one dessert. Originally introduced by Japanese migrants in the early 20th century, halo halo is a colorful chilled blend of evaporated or condensed milk, crushed ice, ube, sweetened beans, coconut strips, sago, gulaman, penipig rice, boiled taro or soft yams, fruit preserves, flan, and often a scoop of ice cream on top. Especially on hot sunny days, this is the perfect way to conclude any meal. No culinary tour in the Philippines is complete without discussing its gigantic, world-famous fast food chain, Jollibee. What started out as a simple ice cream parlor in Metro Manila in 1975 has rapidly become an international mega corporation. According to the company, Jollibee enjoys the lion's share of the local market that is more than all the other multinational fast food brands in the Philippines combined. At present, there are over 1,500 locations in at least 15 countries. In the United States alone, there are now 66 Jollibee restaurants in major cities, and recent reports show major expansion coming soon with an additional 234 restaurants planned across North America. When McDonald's entered the Philippines in 1981, Jollibee was able to not only survive, but thrive, thanks to its local awareness and focus on menu items that appealed to Filipino tastes. There are burgers and fries, but I'm going with my usual order today. A chicken joy with burger steak super meal and a Jolly hot dog. Now get this, chicken joy is Jollibee's legendary breaded crispy fried chicken and there are some trade secrets when it comes to the marination. It's so popular that it's now the top selling item across all markets. Here's something else I have to point out. In the Philippines, spaghetti is not just a main course. It's also a common side item, as you can see here. Also, Filipinos normally prefer sweet spaghetti sauce. Jollibee's sweetened sauce is made from banana ketchup, and it's mixed in with hot dog slices, ground meat, and shredded cheese on top. The first time I saw this on the menu, <laughs> I mean, I just thought it was really funny, but I've actually really come to like the spaghetti. Okay, another part of this super meal is a fairly typical beefsteak with gravy and mushrooms. Of course, you have a hot packet of rice as one of the sides. And lastly, the jolly hot dog. It's a beef sausage topped with an oozy cheese-based dressing, grated cheese, and tomato ketchup. I would say you haven't eaten at Jollibee until you've had the Jolly Hot Dog. It looks pretty basic, but believe me, it's oh so jolly good. Well, I've certainly got to hand it to Jollibee. That was fairly delectable. Now, while this is not the healthiest or most authentic form of Filipino food, I would say that if you're getting fast food anyway in the Philippines or abroad, do make sure to give this iconic chain restaurant a try. After all, who doesn't love the world's happiest bee? Well, I think that's enough food for one day and I doubt I can hold another bite down. But as I stated before, this only scratches the surface of the many restaurants and dishes that make the Philippines so rich and diverse in its culinary offerings. I do hope this video will inspire those of you outside of the Philippines to check out your nearest Filipino restaurant 
and perhaps start planning your own visit to the Philippine Islands. And for my tremendously supportive Filipino audience, including so many living and working abroad, I sincerely hope this has been an interesting and meaningful taste of home. Wherever your future global adventures lead, I wish you and your loved ones many happy trails ahead. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon.